Hi, it's Red Recapped here. Today I'm going to describe a movie called Lucky Number Sleven, which came out in 2006. There will be some spoilers in the following. So, let's begin the film without further ado. In the opening scenes, a bookie is about to enter his car but is immediately killed by an unknown man. The killer then steals the ledger and leaves. In the meantime, another killer goes into an office and stabs two guards in the throat. Immediately afterwards, the killer throws the bookie a baseball straight in the face and kills him. The killer steals the ledger and leaves. The action shifts to a train station, where a man, Smith, talks to a young man, Nick. Smith tells him the story of a man named Max and a criminal group that was involved in horse racing. Two decades ago, horse racing was very popular, and Max heard rumors that a certain horse would definitely win. Therefore, Max borrowed money from the mob to bet on the horse that was supposed to win. Max takes his son with him but tells him to wait in the car. The son is not happy to learn that his father is gambling, however, Max explains that the money he's going to win will pay for his college education. Max naively listens to the rumors but doesn't know that the horse race is actually staged. In fact, the horse he bet on fell in the middle of the race. The betting clerk had threatened Max that not repaying debts to the mob was extremely dangerous, but that did not stop him. In fact, after the race, Max returns to his car but no longer finds it in the parking lot. In addition, the mafia has kidnapped Max's son as well. After torturing Max severely, they kill him and his wife. Immediately afterward, Smith rises from his wheelchair and knocks Nick unconscious. Subsequently, he transports his body to a truck. The scene shifts to a young man named Slevin Kalevra. As he wipes the remnants of shaving foam from his face, he hears a thunderous bang at his front door. He approaches the door wearing only a towel, and when he opens it, a young woman named Lindsay enters. Initially, she is confused because she expected to see her friend Nick, the owner of the house. Slevin observes that Lindsay knocks deceptively high, leading Slevin to think she was much taller than she was. She is immediately attracted to his attention to detail. Lindsay asks him what happened to his nose, and he tells the story. After losing his job, he went to his girlfriend's house and discovered her cheating with another man. After that, Slevin travels to New York to meet a close friend, Nick. After getting off the plane, Slevin was on the phone with Nick when a man approached him and asked him about a cigarette. Slevin told him he doesn't smoke, and then the stranger demanded his money, hitting him in the nose. Lindsay claims that the robber did not steal Slevin's luggage or his beautiful watch. Here, Slevin is charmed by Lindsay's shrewdness and attention to detail. The woman then demands to know Nick's whereabouts, to which Slevin replies that he has not yet turned up. Nick was supposed to meet Slevin at the apartment, but he has not shown up yet. Slevin reveals that he entered because the door was not locked. When the phone rings, Slevin answers it, but the caller hangs up. Lindsay immediately dials the return number of the call then states that she dialed the wrong number and tells Slevin that the call originated from the Hotel Cheval. She now states that they need to find out who called. She calls again and is connected to the same hotel. Lindsay fears that Nick is in danger and that the anonymous caller from the hotel may have provided a clue. Lindsay has a great time playing detective, but she has to go to work and rushes out of the apartment. After she leaves, the doorbell rings again. Slevin rushes to open the door, thinking that Lindsay has returned, but two henchmen who work for someone known as the boss enter. The two henchmen act aggressively, thinking that Slevin is Nick. Slevin claims that they got the wrong guy, but unfortunately he cannot prove it because his wallet was stolen. However, the henchmen are ordered to kidnap the person who lives in this apartment. So they do, and after punching Slevin in the face, they kidnap him and take him to the car. The boss resides in the penthouse of a secure building and is the alleged head of a huge criminal organization. Slevin tries to act smart when the two start talking and begin a cat and mouse language game. Eventually, the boss reveals that Nick owes him $96,000. Since Slevin does not have this amount, the boss makes him an offer. The boss had a son whom he loved dearly, but he was killed by a rival criminal, Rabbi. Therefore, Slevin must do the boss a favor and assassinate the Rabbi's son. His son is known as the fairy because of his homosexuality. Slevin has no choice but to obey, and he then leaves with the henchman. At that moment, the boss starts talking to Smith, a hitman, and we find out how things really are. In reality, the boss hired Smith to kill the fairy, but they need Slevin just to put all the blame on him. Two men hiding inside a vehicle disguised as a plumbing truck photograph Slevin as he is let out of the building. At that moment, one of the men told the other to contact a detective named Brykowski. Slevin returns to Nick's apartment. Lindsay arrives with the intention of transporting him to the Cheval Hotel and continuing the investigation. Lindsay knows a hotel employee who can find out who called the apartment. She notices Slevin looking intently at the newspaper he has just picked up. 
On the front page is news of Hopkins' disappearance, which is ironic since Hopkins is suspected of being involved in a series of other mysterious disappearances. Lindsay's phone rings in her apartment, and she rushes to answer it, believing it to be the hotel employee. When he goes to open the door, he is greeted by two Hasidic-looking men who tell him that Shlomo wants to see him. Slevin tries to explain that he does not know anyone named Shlomo, but he receives another punch in the stomach and is taken, this time, to visit the rabbi. In the car, Slevin notices that the boss's building and rabbi's building are in front of each other. The henchman relates that the rabbi and the boss were once partners and even close friends, but one day they turned on each other and tried to kill each other, and neither has left the building since. Later, Slevin is brought to rabbi, and their conversation turns into another game of linguistic cat and mouse. Eventually, the rabbi informs Slevin that he owes him $33,000. Slevin tries again to explain that he has the wrong person and that Nick is just his friend. However, Rabbi gives him 48 hours to collect the $33,000 by any means. After Slevin is escorted away, we find out that Smith is playing a double game and collaborating with the Rabbi as well. Rabbi informs Smith that he has made half of the predetermined payment into his bank account and that the other half will be paid after the boss is killed. Rabbi asks the hitman why he needs Slevin, and the hitman simply says that he and the young man have unfinished business. Here it becomes clear that, in fact, neither the boss nor rabbi needs Slevin, but it has something to do with Smith. In fact, the rabbi says he can spot a liar and that the young man is not Nick. Smith walks away smiling and says he knows. Later, Slevin returns to the apartment, where he meets Lindsay again. She states that she went to the hotel from where they received the call. Thanks to her friend, who is an employee at the hotel, she found out that the caller was indeed Smith. Lindsay was able to take a picture of him in the elevator, but Slevin says he does not recognize him. Slevin tells her everything that happened to him that day. Later, Slevin meets the boss and tells him that he agrees to assassinate the ferry. Slevin asks for a week to complete the task, but the boss tells him that he has three days. Then, the boss offers him to play a game of chess. If Slevin wins, he will have a week to kill the ferry. If not, the deal remains on the three days. As they play, the boss informs him that the ferry is protected by very competent bodyguards, former war veterans. In addition, the ferry has an amulet around his neck. If it is pressed, it activates the security alarm, and guards will arrive at his apartment within five seconds. Meanwhile, we find out that Smith is involved in the plan and is responsible for Nick's debt claim. On the other hand, Smith plans to assassinate Slevin and the ferry together so as to make it look like they both committed suicide. In the end, Slevin loses the chess game and has three days to complete the mission. When he leaves the building, the group of detectives in the minivan notice him. They are looking for Nick, so they are extremely confused when they see Slevin, as they do not understand who he is. In addition, the detectives discover that a hitman nicknamed Goodcott is back in town, so they have to watch out for him as well. After Slevin returns home, Lindsay reveals that she works at the morgue and found the body of the rabbi's bookie. While Lindsay was at work, Detective Brykowski was also there and revealed that he often gambled with the murdered bookie. Lindsay thinks that Nick escaped and framed Slevin. According to her, Nick paid the stranger on the street to steal the wallet with papers from Slevin. Lindsay affirms that Nick killed the two bookies because they were the only ones who knew his face. Later, Lindsay says she has to go back to work and invites him to have dinner with her later. That night, as they dine at the restaurant, Slevin notices that the ferry is also here. When the ferry goes into the bathroom, Slevin follows him. Detective Brykowski follows him, but Slevin locks the door. After dinner, Slevin reveals to Lindsay that he pretended to be homosexual and arranged a date with the ferry. In addition, Slevin reveals that Brykowski confronted him in the bathroom. The detective tells Slevin that he was supposed to capture Nick, but he has disappeared. Nevertheless, Brykowski is sure that there is a link between Rabbi Smith and Slevin. Later, Lindsay and Slevin return home and spend the night together. The next day, after Slevin leaves the house, he is caught by detectives. Slevin reveals his full name and then is released because the detectives have nothing against him. Later, the boss's henchmen bring Slevin a suit and take him to his appointment with the ferry. Outside, we see that the rabbi's henchmen have been killed in their car. Slevin arrives at the ferry's apartment and shoots him in the stomach shortly thereafter. At that moment, Smith arrives and shoots the ferry in the head instead of shooting Slevin. Slevin is not at all surprised, suggesting that the two are working together. Slevin goes to the car and pulls a dead body out of the trunk. In the process, Smith crushes the ferry amulet. The bodyguards rush inside through the wall, but are killed instantly by Smith with two silenced pistols. Later, Slevin drags the man's corpse and lays it down next to the ferry. Here we discover that the dead man is indeed Nick, the man Smith attacked at the beginning of the film. 
The apartment is then blown up by Smith and Slevin. Later, Smith and Slevin go to the boss after killing his henchman in the elevator. Slevin goes to Rabbi to pay him the debt of $33,000. However, when Rabbi opens the briefcase, he finds it empty, and Slevin hits him hard on the head, knocking him unconscious. In the next scene, the boss and the rabbi wake up tied up. Slevin appears and announces the big twist. The mobsters who killed Max were the boss and rabbi, whereas Slevin is Henry, Max's son. Smith turns out to be the hitman who instead took in and raised little Henry following a moral dilemma. Slevin relates that he and Smith killed the bookies and stole the ledgers. They executed Nick and stole his identity after discovering that he owed money to the boss and the rabbi. Later, in revenge, Slevin murdered the boss's son to induce him to pay Smith to murder the rabbi's son. Smith obtained the boss's contract to assassinate the fairy and convince the rabbi to defend the fairy on the condition that they both pay off Nick's debts, allowing Slevin and Smith unlimited access to the well-protected mob. After revealing his identity, Slevin suffocates rabbi and the boss by taping plastic bags over their heads, killing them in the same way they had killed his father. Then, we discover that Smith killed Lindsay because she took photos of him. While searching for Slevin, Brykowski receives a phone call from his supervisor and learns the genesis of Slevin's identity. The horse his father had bet on was lucky number Slevin, and Kalevra in Hebrew means bad dog, similar to Smith's appellation. Brykowski killed Slevin's mother to pay off gambling debts he incurred. He then, accepts his fate as Slevin gets out of Brykowski's back seat and shoots him, completing his masterpiece of revenge. Lindsay approaches Slevin at the train station, and it is revealed that Smith told Slevin that he had to kill Lindsay because she had a photograph of him. We then find out that Slevin revealed his true identity to Lindsay and helped her stage her death. Slevin tells Smith, who is aware of the deception, that he has to save Lindsay. Smith acknowledges his understanding and decides to leave Lindsay alone. Smith returns Slevin's father's old watch and walks off. That's all from the video. Thanks for watching.